What's up guys? My name's Levi and I'm from Shred Shop YouTube channel. We're connecting you to skateboarding. This is 14 things you didn't know about Thrasher Skateboard Magazine. We're going everything from history to the logo to Phelps' thoughts on celebrities wearing Thrasher Magazine clothing and who's banned from the mag and more. The start. In 1946 in San Francisco, California, Eric Swenson is born. Three days later, Fausto Vitello is born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Vitello's family is forced to leave Argentina because of political unrest and they move to San Francisco, California. In the 1960s, Swenson and Vitello actually meet and bond in the U.S. Army Reserve. They bond over their love of motorcycles. In the 1970s, Swenson actually mangles up his legs in a motorcycle accident. In 1978, the duo partners to form independent skateboard trucks. They also worked with Richard Novak and Jay Sherman. In January 1981, the first Thrasher magazine is produced. They basically made the magazine to promote their independent truck skateboard brand as well as their riders. The first magazine was actually such a rush to print that they didn't have a skateboard photo for the cover. It was actually just a cartoon drawing of someone smith grinding. At the same time they made a printing and production company that was called High Speed Productions. It also went on to print Juxtapose and Slap Magazine. The magazine quickly went on to represent the opposition to status quo. The reason Thrasher Magazine was so important is because it stood for something. Raw, uncensored skateboarding. At the time, it actually wasn't the biggest or the most successful skateboard magazine around, but it still had a cult-like following. In 2006, Fausto Vitello actually died of having a heart attack while riding his motorcycle with friends. His wife, Gwyn Rose Vitello, actually went on to be the president of High Speed Productions. His daughter runs marketing and sales, and his son Tony actually went on to be the president of Thrasher Magazine, so it still has stayed in the family. In 2011, Eric Swenson is found dead in front of a San Francisco police department. Both men have left an amazing legacy on skateboarding, and honestly, skateboarding would not be the same without them. It's very unfortunate that they don't get to see the success that the magazine is today. Jake Phelps. September 24th, 1962, James Kendall Phelps was born in San Francisco. He moved to Boston when he was young, and his parents actually ended up nicknaming him JK, which was shortened to Jake. When Jake was 13, his mom bought him his first skateboard, which changed everything. In the early 1980s, he moved back to San Francisco to skate. At that point, he dropped out of high school and he started working at Concrete Jungle Skate Shop in the Height District. At that point, he was added to their AM team, along with skaters like Noah Slaznik, Mikey Reyes, and Danny Sargent. In 1986, Jake actually met the owners of Thrasher at Concrete Jungle, and they asked him to write for the magazine. In August 1986, he actually becomes an official contributor to Thrasher magazine. In 1989, he becomes the shipping manager. In 1992, he becomes the associate editor. And in 1993, he becomes the editor-in-chief. Jake embodied what Thrasher actually stood for and was more than anyone in existence. And his persona actually became the voice of the brand. He was quoted actually saying, anyone can cover the hard tricks that happened in the Mountain Dew contest, but we don't cover that Another Jake Phelps quote, skateboarding doesn't owe you but it owes you wheel bite in the rain. Over the years, he's gotten fired or either very close to getting fired for very controversial remarks. An old employee was actually quoted saying that Jake didn't have a computer on his desk, an email set up, or his voicemail set up. Jake actually spent a lot of time in the hospital. He claimed that he had a 290 page medical record. He went through seven knee injuries and he had fractures to his legs, pelvis, and skull. Jake actually passed away March 14th, 2019 in San Francisco, California. He was 56 years old and he was actually cremated with his skateboard. His passing was actually covered in every skateboard magazine across the entire planet. It'd be really hard to miss as well as tons of huge media corporations from everything from New York Times all the way to Vogue. You stick with what you like to do, you do it well, and people are always gonna remember it. Celebrities wearing Thrasher. Back in the 90s, bands like Sonic Youth and BC Boys were actually using skateboarding to up their cool factor with the culture. In the past few years, recently you've noticed that a tons of celebrities that have nothing to do with skateboarding, absolutely nothing, have been wearing a ton of their clothes. Some of these celebrities include Justin Bieber, Rihanna, Ryan Gosling, Bella Thor, Tyler the Creator, and Adam Levine. That's unfortunate about Adam Levine, he's sus. As well as tons of other celebrities, tons of mega douchers, and a few models. W Magazine was quoted saying, it's official. You no longer have to know how to skateboard or know anything about skateboarding to fully embrace skateboard style. Ooh. When Phelps was asked by the media 
What do you feel about so many celebrities wearing your clothing? He was known saying, we don't send boxes to Justin Bieber or Rihanna or any of those f clowns. He added, the pavement is where the real f is. Blood scabs doesn't get any realer than that. The hype around skateboarding even pushed Vogue the magazine to start a skateboarding week. Vogue published articles like, here's how to do skateboard style like a model, an ode to great skate hair, and seven breakout skate brands to trick out your summer wardrobe. <laughs> Got him. The articles actually had bits talking about people appropriating skateboarding, which was pretty ironic for a magazine who started Skateboarding Fashion Week. Many skaters have actually been very critical of people jumping on the skateboarding fashion trend. Phelps was quoted saying, man, this is corny st The Thrasher logo. The Thrasher logo is actually just a typeface and it's called Banco. The font type was actually designed by French graphic designer, Roger Excafon. He actually designed it for the Olive Foundry in 1951 and that was something he specialized in was topography. Even though it's just a type font, it's been known for so many years as the Thrasher font and it's been ripped off by so many different companies and brands and clothing designers. Tons of custy dudes like me have even gone as far to get some of their logos tattooed on them. See, I've got this one here and it looks almost nothing like what the actual logo looks like. Great and destroy, right? Thrasher out a video game. Thrasher actually came out with a video game called Skate and Destroy around the same time that Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 came out. Thrasher Magazine and Rockstar Games released their video game, Skate and Destroy, on PlayStation. The Skate and Destroy video game was actually a little bit more realistic in that it was harder to do tricks, whereas Tony Hawk Pro Skater was more of an arcade style game. In Skate and Destroy, you could actually break your board, break your bones, and get arrested by the police, all while trying to get the cover of Thrasher Skateboard Magazine. There's actually a Game Boy Color version that was supposed to come out but was never released after the sales of the original game were super slow. Thrasher Snowboarding Cover. Early on, they had tons of content for anything that would interest skateboarders. This would include tons of snowboarding articles. One time there was actually even snowboarding right on the cover of the magazine, featuring a pro skateboarder, Rob Roscroft. He was pro for Santa Cruz Skateboards. As well as he actually had a Thrasher Skateboarding sticker right on his snowboard. Even weirder and whacker, in 1995, they had a cover with longboarding on the cover, and it said, in heading, in the bold, it said, the cult of the longboard. I'm surprised they didn't lose their entire following at that point. The funny thing about that photo is the feet in the photo that are on the cover are actually Craig Stesick, who you might remember from our Powell and Peralta video. Permanently banned. Phelps considered his calling separating the kooks from the rest. Toss Pappas and Tony Hawk, am I right, guys? Oi, 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 oi. He was known for banning people from the magazine that he didn't like. A lot of times it was permanent, but sometimes those bannings actually didn't last that long. In 1996, Phelps actually labeled pro skater Billy Pepper most annoying person in skateboarding. Billy Pepper actually showed up to the offices and punched Phelps right in the face. He definitely got banned. Over the years, other people that have been banned from the mag, they include Benji Galloway, Tony Farmer, Frank Carrada, and Choppy Omega. It's also interesting to note that Daniel Howard Sturt was banned from the mag and Jeremy Ray. They were both later unbanned when Jeremy Ray did the water tower ollie. And then Daniel Howard Sturt actually canceled his ban by going and sneaking into a trans world shoot of Danny Way jumping out of a helicopter. He took the photos and he took them back to Thrasher and they released in Thrasher a month before trans world. Michael Burnett. He was a kid from Texas who moved to Colorado and sent his zine into Phelps. Michael learned to shoot photos and everything else along the way. His zine actually caught the eye of Jake Phelps, and Jake ended up letting him write articles and other things for Thrasher Magazine. Now, almost 20 years later, you open almost any Thrasher Magazine, and you're going to notice on the first page, Michael Burnett's name is printed on there under Editor-at-Large. Under that, you're going to notice Jake Phelps' name is put under Editor-in-Chief, which means Michael does all the work, and Jake gets to put the stamp of approval on it. So Michael Burnett has actually been the actual editor of Thrasher magazines for 20 years, but Jake has been the face of it. The modern success of Thrasher. It's actually nuts when you think about how far the magazine has come between 1981 and today. It's now the biggest and longest running skateboard magazine on the planet. You tell us if it's the best below. A lot of people refer to Thrasher as skateboarding's Bible, or the Bible. In 2011, Thrasher reported selling 250,000 copies of the magazine, and 1.5 million visitors to their website every month. According to SimilarWeb.com, Thrasher today gets over 2.5 million visits per month, 
making it skateboarding's biggest skateboard website. Skater of the year. Jake Phelps was quoted saying, I'm not going to give the award to some Johnny-come-last-month flavor of the week kind of guy. In 1990, Tony Hawk actually claimed for the very first time Skater of the Year title. It's grown in notoriety ever since, and it is now the top honor in skateboarding. The magazine doesn't let anyone in on the process on how they pick the winner, but most people believe that Jake Phelps actually was the one that handpicked the winner each year. Other notable Skater of the Year award winners include Bob Bernquist, Andrew Reynolds, Mark Appleyard, Eric Costin, Art Osari, Aishad Ware, Milton Martinez, and Jamie Foy. Make sure you click the link below so you can see the full list of the Skater of the Year winners. Only two people have actually won the Skater of the Year award two times, and that's Danny Way and Chris Cole. The last Skater of the Year award that we believe that Jake Phelps actually handpicked was Tyshawn Jones last year, but we think that he would agree with this year's choice of Milton Martinez. <laughs> that even though the Olympics now has skateboarding in it, no skater is really going to care who gets first place or gold medal at the Olympics. That might matter to big corporations, to grandparents and family members, but to every real core skater, Skater of the Year with Thrasher is always going to be the highest honor in skateboarding. King of the Road. In 2003, Thrasher launched their King of the Road contest. The King of the Road contest is a two-week road trip around the United States, whereas in each city they stop, they are given a book with scavenger hunt challenges to do in each city. The scavenger hunt challenges are really vast. They're everything from gnarly or weird skateboard tricks to making out with old ladies to taking a dump in the van with your friend sitting right next to you. Michael Barnett, the editor at the time, said that they couldn't get the biggest and best names in their magazine. So by creating the contest, they were able to get big skate names in the Thrasher video each year. Something also to note about King of the Road is it started with video episodes then it moved on to web episodes when their website was growing like crazy. But near the end of the contest, they actually teamed up with Vice and made it into a full-on TV show of the contest. Hall of Meat. Hall of Meat actually started with skateboarders sending in photos of their gnarliest injuries, and it was printed in the back of the magazine. Now Hall of Meat is mostly videos. These are posted on their website and their Instagram page with almost 2 million followers. A couple of our Shred Shop team riders have actually had Hall of Meat clips over the years. Double Rock. Thrasher built an indoor skate park right along the bay in San Francisco and they called it Double Rock. It's a private indoor skate park where they actually only invite pro teams to come and they film skateboard clips. Even Lil Wayne actually made an appearance at Double Rock. 66 6th Street. Thrasher actually opened their first flagship store at 66 6th Street in San Francisco. The space is actually part museum and part store where it's a meeting place for everyone to come meet up before they go to the sesh. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Levi from Shred Shop YouTube, connecting you with skateboarding. Why don't you guys comment and link us below to your craziest haul of meat. JB's my boyfriend, so he's allowed to wear it.